matter. It shows what he believes, right. and it shows the application right. on faith and morals. But this is why the whole doctrine of papal infallibility is utterly irrelevant. Well, it's a joke. Because the Pope is right unless he's wrong, and you never know whether he's wrong or not. And this, again, you, you can determine that he's wrong. Number one, compare what he says to the plain meaning of secular scripture. Now, in some cases of secular scripture, you don't have the plain meaning. Um, and so obviously in other cases there, in those cases, you have to go to a different r rule of faith. But the the first rule of faith that you're going to go to is, is sacred scripture. So if, let me give you an example. If if the Pope came out and said, Jesus is not the Messiah, look, I only I, I just simply need to go to the New Testament to know that he's wrong. I don't, I don't have to go anywhere else. Um, so go to sacred scripture, number one. If this is a question where it's it's not explicitly addressed in scripture, it's a little bit more complex than that. Then yes, you do go to other parts of the rule uh, or other rules of faith, and so you could go to other teachings of the magisterium, especially ones that are definitive in nature. Um, and uh, you could also go to other sources of theology, so the loci uh, theology, uh, theology, uh, I believe is what it is, isn't the uh, the locations of theology. Uh, the Losai Theologici. <laughs> it's, it's always a tongue twister for me to pronounce that one. But the, the various um, places of theology. Um, so in, in this case, it would be um, the consensus of the fathers, the liturgy, art, sacred art, things like that. Um, so there's plenty of ways, plenty of ways to determine if what the Pope said isn't true. Um, and then also the question of papal infallibility is not a wax nose that he's infallible except when he's not it's not arbitrary there are objective standards and objective indicators that pastor eternus lays out there are three essential criteria that pastor eternus and vatican one gives for identifying papal infallibility and they're objectively known when you apply those criteria you can then determine if papal infallibility has in fact been employed um, so they're, they're just presenting it like there's no real objective indicators and there are objective indicators. So it's not this wax nose that they're trying to, um, portray it as, but I guess if, if you don't really know a whole lot about past returnists or objective indicators or, um, the magisterium and how it actually functions and how to, uh, weigh magisterial propositions or what the sources of theology are in Catholicism and what the role of the individual and private interpreter is in relation to the authoritative interpreter. I guess if you haven't worked through all these issues, it will seem this way to them in the way that they're portraying it. But I would just say that's a that's due to ignorance on their part. And and just because you're ignorant doesn't mean you're right. Ignorance doesn't equal being right. It just means you're ignorant. This is their little way of sliding out from underneath yep. it. But again, I'm intrigued by the... <laughs> I can't keep a straight face on that one. <laughs> Let me... I gotta see it again. Yep. Yep. I can't do it. Hold on. Let, let's, let, let's see how we get... A little way of sliding out from underneath yep. it. But again, yep. I'm intrigued by the question... No. Stop it. Stop it. If there is a Catholic out there that, sa that says, uh, well, we can just ignore it because it wasn't uh, an act of papal infallibility. Yeah, if there's a Catholic out there saying that, that's an ignorant Catholic. They don't know what they're talking about because they've missed this entire concept of authoritative teachings that are non-definitive in nature that require religious submission of, of, of intellect and will. Lumen Gentium 25. They're, they're ignorant. But why are you pointing me to ignorant Catholics as the standard of Catholicism? Go to the sources. I could do the same thing to them. Just go to random Reformed Baptists, random Reformed Baptists, quiz them in theology, wait until they say something stupid, and then say, see, look how dumb they are, and just do the same thing. Now, that wouldn't be very charitable, and it wouldn't be very fair to them because their source of theology isn't an ignorant brand Reformed Baptist. Their source of theology is going to be the Bible, at least they think. I argue it's not, but they're going to argue it is, and they think that it is. So it would be fair for me to actually go to Scripture to critique them, 
not to go to quiz a random reform baptist and when they say something stupid i try to nail them and say see how dumb this is see how inconsistent this is but that's what they're doing to us they're going to catholics who clearly don't know what they're talking about um who just say well father J you know you wrote this letter to father james martin and i can ignore it because it wasn't an act of people infallibility yeah that again that's going to be something that you'll hear from some random catholic they're they're not a source of theology. They don't represent Catholicism. So, but I found it entertaining. It's like, yep, yep, yep. Because George is utterly irrelevant. Oh, it's a joke. Because the Pope is right unless he's wrong, and you never know whether he's wrong or not. And this is their little way of sliding out from underneath yep. it. But again, I'm intrigued by the question because Jordan phrases it. And I'm going, okay, how long has it been since a pope did something of consequence? Because that's Jordan's claim here. Yep. There's nothing to see here, folks. Move, Move along. On. Move nothing on. Nothing important going on. Something of consequence. Are, are you kidding me? Are, are, you, are you kidding me right now? Uh, popes teach constantly? How many encyclicals have we had since 1950? Just encyclicals alone. There have been numerous acts of authoritative teachings of the magisterium. You don't have to argue that they're definitive in nature to point out that they're authoritative in nature. And, it, and they're just ignorant of this. They, they don't understand that there are di different acts of the magisterium. There are definitive acts and there are non-definitive acts. They don't understand the difference they, they don't know. They seem to only know about definitive acts, which they which they identify univocally with papal infallibility, as, as if ecumenical councils and conciliar infallibility doesn't exist, as if the ordinary and universal magisterium of the College of Bishop and their definitive teachings don't exist. But you have non-definitive acts of the magisterium. They are authoritative in nature and they require religious submission of intellect and will. They seem to be unaware of that. He says, there's, you know, according to Catholics, there's just been nothing of consequence. Are you kidding me? The only way you could say that is if you don't know this entire category known as non definitive teachings that are non definitive and yet authoritative and require religious submission of intellect and will. It's called the merely authentic magisterium. That's the only way that somebody could say something so silly like that. Because unless the Pope does a dogmatic declaration for faith and morals, we don't need to pay attention. So why do you have... Again, if there's a Catholic saying that, you, you can rightly dismiss that Catholic. They don't know what they're talking about. But why is he taking them at their word as if that represents Catholicism? That is a cheap shot. I'm going to use James White's arguments against him right now james white always wants to point out if we're gonna serve the god of truth we have to be truthful okay yeah apply that to yourself you claim you serve the god of truth for john from john 14 and you you completely misrepresented misrepresented catholics there in a way that did not honor he who is the truth so according to your own admission you're violating a principle that you often harp on that is james white Constantly harps on this. We have to be truthful in our argumentation against others because we serve the God of truth. But you don't do that with Catholics. For some reason, that standard just drops. It exists there for Muslims. Whenever he engages Muslims, he wants to say, oh, yeah, we serve the God of truth. So we have to be truthful in the way that we engage Muslims. Look at his interaction with Yasser Qadi. He wants to be very truthful. All of a sudden, that standard is dropped when it comes to Catholics and engaging Catholics. It's just, it's out the window. Don't know why. Other than perhaps a very strong bias or ignorance, one of the two. But why would you take these ridiculous and ignorant people at their word when they say that? Shouldn't you just say, well, those Catholics don't know their own faith? Wouldn't that be the truthful thing to do? Of the Pope, then. What good has he been for a He's long, long worthless. time? See, they're saying, what good is the Pope, according to your standard? But that's a false standard. That's not the Catholic standard. 
But see, they're just shaking their head, just thinking, oh, these guys are just so stupid, so silly. I mean, they don't see the glaring problem here. You haven't had any dogmatic definitions by the Pope since 1950. So what good is your Pope? If, if it's so rare in history, what good is your Pope? I mean, if that were true, that would be a good argument, but that is not true. And thus, you're not serving the God of truth. And you're not living by the standard that you claim to live by. And it's not like this is just some esoteric part of Catholic doctrine that is just so hard to know that they're they're not morally culpable for misrepresenting Catholicism like this. This is just basic stuff. I mean, it's, it is in the Catechism. It's certainly there in Lumen Gentium 25. I mean, just the basics that James White claims to know. He claims to be an expert in this area. He's written several books on the magisterium. I'm oh, sorry, on Catholicism. So he, by his own admission, claims to know these things very well and yet doesn't know the very basics on this question. He should have corrected him. Is that Rich there in the corner? He should have corrected Rich and said, no, nope, you don't know what you're talking about. Catholics do say that there are non-definitive yet authoritative teachings of the Pope. And so there are plenty of reasons to have a Pope, even when the Pope is not engaging in definitive teachings even when he's not promulgating definitive teachings. There's plenty of reasons to have authoritative teachings that are merely authoritative and non-definitive in nature. He should have corrected him and said, you're strong, Marining Catholics. Here's a proper way to understand them. He didn't do that. You know why? Because he doesn't know the basics of Catholicism. James White doesn't know. He doesn't know the basics of the magisterium, especially. I've pointed this out in many, many videos. It's according to your own standards. I know. I know it. I know it. Yep. Yep. And there are they're all just so stupid. Yep. I know it. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. A lot of folks out there that know it as well. They just don't know what to do. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm baffled. I don't know what to do. I mean, you got me there. <laughs> we hadn't had a dog since 1950. And yep. No good in having a Pope now. Yeah. That's totally us. Yeah. We know it. We just don't know what to do with this conundrum that you've presented. It's just such a strong argument. You can't tell me that there isn't a major bias operative here. You, you can't tell me that. Because, again, he's going to claim to be an expert in this area. Okay. So by your own admission, you're culpable for this misrepresentation of Catholicism. I'd give it a pass to just any, you know, just a random Protestant out there who has this misunderstanding. Like Rich, you know, Rich probably isn't very well versed in theology. I, I'd kind of give a pass more to people like that. I, I You can't give that pass to James White. Um, he's just had too many opportunities to, to know better. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to see the full video, go to the link in the description. And also, while you're at it, hit the subscribe button. God bless.